The Montreal Canadiens have been struggling, but help may be on the way in the form of Patrick Laine. The Vegas Golden Knights look to overcome a disappointing weekend, while the Utah Hockey Club looks to build on their big 6 nothing shutout of Vegas. We've got all that and a lot more on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Gil Martin here and welcome everybody to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts so you get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show the co-host of Locked On Canadiens, Laura Saba. And Laura, it wasn't the easiest weekend for the Canadiens and their fans. W- what happened this weekend? <laughs> that, or uh, well, what didn't happen this weekend? Maybe I should ask. Essentially, yes. Uh, so those of you who, who know uh, our show will know that when the officiating is bad, we will we, we will call it out. Um, and I think against New York Rangers, it wasn't just bad. It was ex- egregious, right? So the Canadians lost two games this weekend in regulation. They lost one against the Rangers on Saturday and one against Boston on Sunday. And the Rangers one was the one where if you haven't been following the Canadians this season, they've had a tough season, right? We've come to expect poor play, um, getting hemmed in in their defensive zone, not being able to get anything going offensively. The team is, you know, it's it's, it's a rebuilding team. It's a very young team. They play immaturely. Uh, if they get scored on first, they can't really recover. Um, and so it was really, really disheartening to see an effort against the New York Rangers where we know that they have been slumping. They they are in disarray. Their last, I would say, maybe 10 to 15 games have have, have really called into question uh, whether they deserve to be um, in the playoffs, let alone near the top of the standings. And they were supposed to be a contender this year. So the Montreal Canadiens, as we've been asking them to do all season, exhibited killer instinct. Um, they really saw a team that was suffering and, and, and slumping, and they decided that they were going to capitalize on that opportunity. However, the officiating had other plans and it started with non-calls against egregious, you know, trips um, and things like that to then having the Canadians be, uh, bear the brunt of uh, some, some roughing and fighting, et cetera, um, that the Rangers instigated. Um, And not only did that happen, (laughs) they, they spent, an an inordinate amount of time in that scrum trying to decide what to do. And at the end of it decided that the New York Rangers deserved a power play, but that was not the end of it. Towards the end of the game, there was a very blatant non-call that cost the Canadians an opportunity to go into overtime. Um, And I think that um, that was really, you know, in a nutshell. So to see a team, um, rebuild their effort uh, to see a team put in an effort that we have not seen very many times this season. I I could count maybe one or two games that we've seen so far, and they've played about 26 games, 25 games so far. Um, You know, to see them, to see them put that effort and then not be rewarded, but not only that have it snatched away from them was very disheartening. And if that's not enough, like it's a 3 PM game against the New York Rangers, sorry, a 1 PM game against New York Rangers. They have to follow that up with a back-to-back at 3 p.m. in Boston. And it was Boston Centennial game. So, you know, you can't really fault the schedule makers for the fact that Boston Centennial game was going to be on Sunday, right? It had to be, you know, you can't celebrate a Centennial two months later. Um, And you also cannot play any other team against the Boston Bruins for their Centennial game than the Montreal Canadiens. There's way too much history there, right? So that's not really, you know, it's an unfortunate piece of scheduling. I would have loved to have not seen the Canadiens play on the Saturday, uh, but then on the second night of a back-to-back or the second afternoon of a back-to-back, they came in um, to Boston and they played okay. They did not play as well as they played against the Rangers. Uh, but in the Boston game, goaltending really sunk them. 
uh, because I do believe that it was a winnable game. So it's a tough weekend for Canadians fans. It's a tough weekend for the Habs, but there might be some good news on the way. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Patrick Laine, close to returning. When do you think he'll be back? And what kind of an impact do you think he'll have on this young team? So he traveled with the team. The team had a three-game road trip. So they went to Columbus, and they went to New York, then they went to Boston, and he traveled with the team. Um, but we were told that it was unlikely he would play. Uh, I think it was more traveling so that he would be with them for practices and, and et cetera, et cetera. So there is a small chance that he's going to play on uh, Tuesday night against your Islanders, Gil. Um, we are all officially on Patrick watch. It is uh, on, you know, it's, it's any minute now at this point. Um, I do think that it's more likely we'll see him later this week, but I don't think that we're going to wait longer than this week. And I, I would love to see him against uh, the New York Islanders. But at the time that we're recording this, there's no news. And I do think it'll be a game day decision because they, they might uh, announce it on Monday, but I think it's very, very unlikely. Uh, but he's pretty close to returning. He's been practicing no con uh, he's been practicing with contact with the team. Uh, and his recovery has gone much faster than we expected. We thought we would see him around Christmas. Instead, we're seeing him just after American Thanksgiving. So it is, it's definitely positive. Um, and you know, the impact that he's going to have on the young team is, uh, we have to measure our expectations or manage our expectations. I should say, uh, he is coming back from a very, very lengthy recovery period during which there was one major setback, right? He was ready to come back fully ready. And then he, uh, got injured in the preseason. So he spent a lot of time not playing NHL games. Uh, so it is going to be a little bit of, um, a growing pains, a learning period, a, an adjustment period. I think adjustment period is the best way to say it. Uh, but I think the uh, positive energy that he's going to inject into this team, uh, coupled with the fact that there will now be an additional scoring threat on the team, uh, is going to really uh, inspire them. I think it's going to give them a better, better energy. You can't really do anything about the fact that this roster is just so young and so immature. Um, and that, you know, maybe 50 to 70% of these players won't be here two years from now. Uh, but with Patrick Laine, I think, you know, uh, who's going to be happiest? The centers, the Nick Suzuki, who's, who's probably going to play again with him. Um, you know, Christian Vark, who might get a chance with him. Kirby Doc might get a chance with him. But I think um, everyone is just going to be so happy to see him. And he brings such uh, a subtle, uh, humorous energy. You know, he's so funny and, and they love him in the locker room. He's loved being around this team. The team has loved having him around. Um, but I think you're going to see a new energy to this team. You, you talked a little bit about the immaturity of this team. And we know they're in a rebuild, as you alluded to. How does the coaching staff speed up that maturing process? So I think the, the biggest thing with Martin St. Louis is he's focused a lot on the little things, right? So the players are getting better at little, little things. I think it's really important to point out, too, that last season their power, uh, penalty kill was hopeless. Um, and this season it's actually quite good. It's quite impressive, right? So even though they do get hemmed in in the defensive zone and they aren't able to get the puck up uh, the ice or out of out of their own zone, um, I think that 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 is really something that is a, a major improvement over last year's team. And I think the fact that Martin St. Louis tries to do these incremental small adjustments to people's game makes us very impatient because you see that, you know, maybe this individual player is not doing this bad habit anymore, but you're seeing them lose games and you're seeing them lose games badly. Um, and so I think the biggest thing is they need to figure out a way to develop killer instinct in these players because you're not going to improve them defensively overnight. It's going to take a lot of those incremental improvements, but at least teaching them to capitalize on opportunities while you then try to help their transition game, try to help their defensive game, try to help them, you know, remember to carry the puck into the ice instead of dumping or drop passing it, right? All these little bad habits, they're going to take a long time to fix, but if you can at least instill some killer instinct in this team, you're going to be able to see them be in games longer and, and, and then like play 60 minutes. Obviously something that uh, would go a long way toward improving the team. Laurel, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? 
So the podcast is called Locked On Canadians, and you can find it anywhere you get this podcast, right? YouTube, all the all the audio podcast apps. Um, you can find us. We've actually migrated over to Blue Sky. You can find us at uh, Locked On Canadians on Blue Sky. You can also find us at Locked On Canadians on pretty much everywhere else. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. Uh, our Gmail address is Locked On Canadians. You'll find me at the Actistic, and you'll find my wonderful co-host at Maybe It's Ian. Uh, check us out. We love to rant about the officiating. And in fact, our Monday episode is just that <laughs> all right laura thank you so much always a pleasure thank you so much for inviting me today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. get ready to tackle the nfl action with FanDuel, america's number one sports book because right now new customers can bet five dollars and get 150 dollars in bonus bets if you win the FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live, play-by-play, -play, and so much more, all on the same page where you place your bets. And hockey fans, use your knowledge of the game of hockey and your favorite team to place exciting bets on FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the National Football League. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. One of my other favorite features on the Game Time app is the view from your seat. You go on the app and you can get a panoramic view from your seat before you purchase the tickets so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Just download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show the uh, co-host of Locked On VGK, Chris Golick and uh, Chris, uh, a mixed weekend for Vegas. They beat the Winnipeg Jets in, in a closely contested game. And then was it a letdown, in your opinion, losing 6 nothing to Utah? I don't know. I mean, starting with, uh, with Winnipeg, I put it out there that the Jets were on a long road trip. They had the holiday off in Vegas. And I joked maybe it was going to be a guilty game for the Jets. And then they announced right before Hellbuck is going to miss the game. Allegedly, they wanted to keep him out for the divisional games. I don't know if uh, Hellbuck was partying or if the team, I don't know what was going on. But in any event, um, the Golden Knights definitely, for lack of a better term, emptied the clip uh, against the Jets. They put everything they had into that game. And it's almost like they didn't even know they had a game the next night. The Coyotes game was a good reminder one of the pair of coyotes. I, I always call them the coyotes. All right, everybody. In Utah does. hockey. Well, like, I got the Chuck Knoblock yips with uh, with the, <laughs> with that. Um, so it's a reminder of the parity in, in, in the NHL. Number one, all the teams are good, even if standings don't dictate that. And it's also a reminder that you better be at least on your B or C game because if you're not, you're going to get crushed by a team like the Utah Hockey Club. I'm not taking anything away from them either when I say that. Yeah, I mean. Let's get back to the Winnipeg game because obviously there's a, a lot of good things to be said about that. What what did VGK do so well that they were able to come up with this victory? They just kept coming, I think. Um, didn't back down. A lot of cliches, I guess. Um, it wasn't even their best game. Like a couple of the Jets' goals were, I mean, somehow the Jets ma managed a three on two off of a VGK offensive zone faceoff. And then Petrangelo just did a terrible uh, cover with Hannafin. And next thing you know, it's a quick Jets goal. They lost another defensive zone faceoff where the Jets took all three seconds to put it in the back of the net. So 
What I like about the game is the fact that the Golden Knights were far from at their best, and they played, I believe, the Jets at the time, and maybe still today might have the best, uh, the most points in the NHL, or they're at least up there right now. So the Golden Knights got it done in regulation without their best performance. Brett Howden is getting you know, gets two big goals in the game. You get scoring coming from you know depth scoring right now without Mark Stone in the lineup and. That top line, which has still been churning really well with um, Eichel and Barbash. I think Barbash had one or two goals in that game as well. So you got depth scoring, top lines doing their thing, and um, Aiden Hill got the job done that game. Talk to me a little bit about defense because offensively defense? this team – What defense? Well, that's my question. I mean, offensively, Vegas is hitting on all cylinders, e- even without Mark Stone, but yeah. – you know, 23rd in the league in goals allowed. Is it defense? Is it goaltending? What What's going on on the back end here? I mean, starting with the goaltenders, both goalies are below 900. 8.94 for Aiden Hill. Sam Snoff is an 8.92 save percentage right now. Obviously, that took a bit of a hit yesterday with a, letting a little bit of a sit, letting a six ball yesterday. So that certainly isn't going to be good for anyone's stats. Um, defensively we're gonna start with noah hannafin so hockey stat cards really good uh twitter follow uh they put out the report card after every single game either on their twitter feed x feed whatever or on their website and it's basically a grade of how the players did and it's a sliding bar the more to the left they are the worse they are the farther to the right the better they were noah hannafin's making a living on the bottom of the hockey stat cards he's either like the very very bottom or at the very very top but lately, he's been at the very, very bottom. Hannafin gets a big contract, big trade for the Golden Knights. He's a minus seven on the season. Just for comparison, Braden McNabb, uh, VGK day one, uh, day one misfit, is a plus 16. Um, some of the other defensemen right now, as far as plus minus, Nick Haig is a minus three. Shea Theodore, a minus two. So point being is Noah Hannafin's kind of out there on an island as far as his plus minus. So you said 23rd in goals against. Coach Bruce Cassidy put out a measurable before the season started. He wanted the Golden Knights to be the best defense in the Pacific Division. And as sad as it sounds, they actually might be. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how, The Pacific is the gift that keeps on giving all season long, thankfully. But if the Golden Knights want to do anything besides, you know, claw for the division, we'll see how the middle third of the season treats VGK. But if they want to do anything better than maybe be a one-and-done type of team, defense better figure it out. So what do you think is missing? How do they figure it out? I think the combinations, number one. Um, Braden McNabb, plus 16. He stays at home, does his job. Noah Hannafin likes to be a mobile defenseman, rush the puck. And Coach Cassie talked about Hannafin a little bit in the loss and mentioned that now that Hannafin's not in the top power play unit, those are touches he doesn't get. So maybe it's a mindset thing where he's trying to cheat up in the play to get those touches. Um forgetting about the defensive responsibilities at times. But I think at least the short term, right now it's Petrangelo and Hannafin as the top pairing. On paper, that's pretty good. On paper, that's a really good pairing. You want those two out there in the most sensitive moments of the game, but the reality is they don't – it's not even just the stats, it's the eye test. They're out of position with each other, coughing up pucks at the blue line. So in the short term, maybe it's just keep tinkering the lines and find the right – Find the right pairing. Braden McNabb stays at home, does his job. He's plus 16. Put McNabb and uh, Hannafin out there together. Let Hannafin go wherever the heck he wants. Let Braden McNabb uh, stay on the defensive blue line and see what happens. You guys have a, a couple of players who are in the race for the Cy Young. You have uh, right now Brett Howden, 10 goals, one assist. And then Pavel Durofiev, 12 goals, five assists. All kidding aside with the Cy Young stuff, talk to me about the contributions of those two players. So, so you meant to say Cy Young. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, listen, uh, Dora Fiev is someone I've been beating the drum about for three years in this town, whether it's my personal business of uh, buying and trading and opening boxes of sports cards or, uh, you know, just talking about the possibility of uh, Dora Fiev breaking out. And it's happening right now. It's happening. And Brett Howden, I think, just hit his career high in goals. As crazy as that sounds, Brett Howden looks like, uh, as far as points on the Vegas Golden Knights, Howden is around eighth or ninth, but 10 goals, just one assist, but 10 goals. He's kind of the Swiss Army knife, maybe took uh, 
Mike Amadio's role, who went to Ottawa in the offseason, who plays on all the lines, could play center, could play wing, could play in the top six, the bottom six, he can kill. Maybe not so much on the power play, um, but Howden just signed a sweetheart of a deal for the VGK. Um, Five-year extension, 2.5 per. 2.5 million. That's insanely low. And he just signed it a couple like uh, last week, if I'm not mistaken. So for someone who is uh, having a career season to sign a, an extension for a half decade, I'm I'm glad he wants to be in Vegas because uh, he left some money on the table to do so. It's a tight division race. What are the keys for Vegas to play more consistently and hold on to first place? I mean, listen, it's a vet team. There's a lot of championship pedigree behind the bench and obviously on the ice. So Petrangelo is always a good person to listen to in the post game or practice. He'll always give you a pretty fair perspective of what's happening. And, you know, Petrangelo, I think, was the interview after the 6-0 blowout to the Utah, not Arizona, to the Utah Hockey Club. And just, hey, get back to work tomorrow. I remember when I've interviewed him, him in the past as well, when the team has had some rough rough patches pretty quick. Hey, we go to work tomorrow. What are we going to do? We can sit here and dwell. No, we're going to go to work and try and get it fixed. So just kind of let it take its take, let things take their, take their course, I guess. I don't know if that's the best answer. Um, coming up on the middle third of the season right now, that's always been a concern for the Vegas golden Knights since Bruce Cassidy has taken over behind the bench. So hopefully if Mark Stone returns, insert LTIR joke here, but hopefully Mark Stone returns, CERN, that's obviously going to help. Goaltending, Aiden Hill, Team Canada, possibly uh, chalk to make Team Canada for the, um, for the Four Nations face-off. We'll see. We'll find out in a couple of days. But my sources say he's a, he's a lock along with Jordan Bennington right now. Leave it at that. Um, so goaltending, Aiden Hill needs to be the number one goaltender. Samsonoff. They kind of let, let him hang out to dry yesterday, left him in for all six goals because Vegas did play the night before. Um, hopefully, Samsonov can shake that off because he's going to be a very important part if the Golden Knights wish to make a run at the division and obviously a long playoff run. And then last but not least, we talked about already the defense. They got to figure out what they're doing because what they're doing right now isn't working. And they might be the best defensive unit in the Pacific Division, which means absolutely nothing because their defense is playing terrible right now. Call it what it is. All right. Well, Chris, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you and your co-host on social media? Yep. Uh, follow Locked On VGK Podcast on YouTube or anywhere you get your pod, anywhere you get your podcast. Uh, I'm Chris Golick at TD Chris G on Twitter. That's TD like touchdown. TD Chris G on Twitter. All right, Chris. Thanks so much. Thank you. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. Prize Picks puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. This week at Prize Picks, all you have to do is pick whether or not certain players will go over or under their Prize Picks estimates. For example, Jack Hughes for more than four shots on goal, or Artemi Panarin for more than one assist. Check out all the latest odds at Prize Picks. Download the app today. Use code Locked On NHL, and you'll get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Again, download the Prize Picks app. Use code Locked On NHL. You'll get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks run your game. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show the co host of Locked On Utah HC, Robin Leano. And uh, Robin, uh, a very nice holiday weekend for Utah HC, a 6 0 shutout win over the Vegas Golden Knights. And a, were you surprised by this? And B, what did they do to make it happen? You know, it certainly was, you know, it was a bit of a surprise. I think someone made the joke on uh, on X. They said, if you had Utah, I think after the first period, uh, beating Vegas four to nothing on your bingo card, you'd be lying because no one expected that. We're talking Vegas, one of the best teams in the Pacific Division right now versus Utah, who's been struggling a lot. They've lost a lot of their games. 
mainly have been letting a lot of goals pass and having a lot of defensive struggles. Uh, a blue line that's essentially broken. Um, but they found a way to win. They found they, they got a little bit of that confidence back, finding who they needed, uh, and, and also doing it about uh, you know off the coattails of a uh, of a rookie goaltender, not, not, nonetheless. But hey, you know when you get that leadership back, getting the offense though, I think that's that's this what that's what the team needed. Jackson Stauber making his Utah HC debut, twenty nine save shutout. I mean, were you surprised, A, that he got the start, and B, that he played so well? Uh, definitely not surprised he got the start because Connor Ingram out with, an, uh, you know, with a minor injury. He's kind of day-to-day, so they needed a goaltender to bring up. Karel Vejmelka had started in the previous game against the Edmonton Oilers. Because it's essentially like a back-to-back, they didn't want to put starts Veggie in again. They realized that you don't want to have to put the risk of injuring your your one B goaltender, so they had to make they they had to make that quote calculated risk. Bring Jackson Stauber in, and looks like that that risk paid off. You know, not only getting his for NHL debut, but getting his uh, getting a you know, or Utah Hockey Club debut, but also his first career NHL shutout. I mean, that's that, that's an, that's an amazing accomplishment in just one game to do that in the NHL. What did the defense core, which, as you mentioned, has been struggling, what did they do differently in this game to help get this shutout? I feel like it's a, one thing is definitely a confidence thing. And looking at this team and uh, because how broken they are, they, they've, they've been struggling in the confidence. You know, Maverick Lamoureux is, is uh, out, you know, four to six, <laughs> four to six weeks. Uh, Sean Jersey is out until at least maybe like February or March. John Marino out until like January, February. So you've got a lot of a lot of crucial individuals who are out. Um, but the next guy stepped up, Robert Bortuzzo stepping up. But I, I would say even more so in, in Mikhail Sergachev. Mikhail Sergachev has proven that he is the guy, the defenseman to really watch out for in this Utah Hockey Club blue line. And um, definitely, I mean, it was looking great doing it. He's controlling that blue line. He's filtering the pucks to the net when he needs to, making sure that he stays in the zone. Doing everything as you, you really would have hoped to see at a defenseman, which not 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 to put all the rest of the de- you know the, the defense down, but it's been it's been a little bit lacking still. One area that Utah has struggled with has been special teams, both the power play and the PK. What's going on, and and how can they fix these problems? Uh, well, I think I think when it comes to the PK, first and foremost, and I mean, you're not going to have a great PK percentage when you're the most penalized team in the National Hockey League. I think that's first and foremost is, is one, cleaning up your game. Uh, there are some penalties out there who, okay, those are penalties which those are smart penalties. You need to take ones like those. But then there are other ones in which just, you know, simple delay of game penalties or too many men penalties. They're ones that are, you know, a desperation because you made a really bad, uh, a really bad stretch pass that you have to, you're, 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 Figuring out what to do on the back end on that back check, those aren't those aren't going to work well for you. So and it's and it's shown when they go down that many penalties, go down that many times, you're not going to get them. They're not going to get the momentum. Penalty kill has shown that, and how many times they did it, they just they get. And I think that's what's hurt their confidence multiple times, and they don't get it. And they don't. And, that, that is also is going to go to that power play. They're not going to get enough on the power play. Their confidence is still down. Most of the time, if they're on the power play, they're probably still chasing the game. Uh, so it just, for them, all it really needs to take is to take a little moment to step back. Maybe someone like Clayton Keller or Nick Schmaltz or Lawson Cross, someone on that, someone who's wearing an A, or Nikos Sergachev, he wears an A every now and then. One of those players, you know, step in either in a locker room or on the bench to say, hey, Let's take a step back and let's realize what we have going here. We have an opportunity if we're on the power play or we have a really important kill here. Let's take advantage of this. Got to ask about Logan Cooley and his development seems to be very productive this year. What do you see as far as, you know, him getting more used to the NHL and, and blossoming into the player that people thought he could be? Yeah, Logan Cooley's been fantastic. I think one of the important things in the first in the very first few games to Logan Cooley, and I think it even showed in the beginning of this season, is seeing that he had a 
uh, he had an unwillingness to take the puck himself and be the selfish guy every now and then and take a shot. Um, he kind of deferred to the veterans and he would take a pass when he didn't need to take a pass. And uh, sometimes it kind of broke the momentum. And I feel like he's getting his own confidence there. And he's realizing he, he just needs to be smart and be in the right place at the right time. Um, and he's the one of those guys that can take a shot. He is a, he is a fantastic playmaker and, and a you know, great goal scorer. Just take advantage of that. This team has now been in Salt Lake for two months of the actual regular season. What has the impact been on the community, and what has this move meant for this organization? Oh, I think it's been uh, it's been a fantastic move. I feel like a lot of these players have uh, they, they're brave. They're, they're breathing, you know, a bit of a sigh of relief. They don't have to worry about any of the other you know, any of the other cloud of what's happening around in Arizona or what's going on. Uh, between the ownership is they're just like they're able to focus on just the hockey no one's asking them all those other questions maybe some and maybe now the only questions they get out that's not hockey is like hey have you adjusted to uh to salt lake city or um or you know it's like hey now that you're here for a little bit what's been your favorite you know restaurant whatever they've been joking around a little bit having a lot more fun um and it really it's impact the community they seem happy there the fans seem really excited take a look Example on the day when they first started selling jerseys only a few weeks back, it they think they uh, not they didn't set the record, but they were like the second most, and I think the last year in this in this year or whatever it was of NHL merchandise sale in a single day, only you know tied only to I think I think we oh yeah, got last couple years I guess because only tied only to the uh, Vegas Golden Knights Stanley Cup championship uh, clincher you know just a little over a year ago. Very impressive. So what is one thing besides getting healthy that this team needs to do better to get back into the playoff hunt? Yeah, I mentioned it earlier and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep hammering this one uh, at this as a major point is they just need to get their confidence back. They realize that this is a team that has, has all the tools, even on the, you know, this offense, it's an incredibly, you know, goal potent offense that for a while didn't really have, you know, a massive scoring job for that game against Vegas. They, they just could not score goals as much as you'd expect them to. They need to get that confidence back and realize that they're one of the better goal scoring teams in the league. They need to show that. So and until they realize that, get that confidence back. I feel like the, it might be a little more struggle, but when they do, I think they can kind of get right back into it. All right, Robin, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you and your co-host on social media? Yeah, you can find uh, you can find us on X at LO underscore NHL Utah. The podcast is also on Blue Sky. You can follow us at Locked On Utah Hockey. I'm personally at Robin underscore Leonio on X and Robin Ice Time on Blue Sky. Tom Callahan is at Callahan on Air on X and at Tom, and Tom Talks on Blue Sky. All right, Robin, thank you so much, and uh, always great to talk hockey with you. Of course. Thanks, Gil. Thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen today. For your second listen, find Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Become a fantasy hockey expert and get the edge over your league mates with daily tips from hosts Steel and Flip. Find Locked On Fantasy Hockey on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank my guests. I want to thank Laura Saba of Locked On Canadiens, Chris Golick of Locked On Vegas Golden Knights, and Robin Leano of Locked On Utah Hockey Club for joining me today. I'm Gil Martin. I host the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, and I co-host the Friday edition along with Rachel Donner. Don't forget, we're here every day, Monday through Friday, bringing you the biggest stories from around the National Hockey League. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe, and thanks for listening to and watching the Locked On NHL podcast.